Okay, last time I left off flying a heading of 210 to intercept the radial 170 from the LAX VOR to go to limbo. So, uh, I'm still there, except right now I'm at uh, 3,000 feet. I haven't reached the radial for 170 yet. So I'm leveling off at about 3,000 feet and I'm expecting the radial of 170 to come in at any second. Otherwise the instruments look good. Uh, okay, the VSI just went down a little bit. Uh, the attitude indicator looks okay, but the VSI keeps playing. Uh, and the airplane seems to be in a turn so something is off between the instruments there's obviously something off so apparently the vacuum system just failed so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my compass into the picture I'm going to zoom in so I'm concentrated on the instruments fully the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get control of this airplane it seems from the compass that I'm headed almost northwest, so I'm going to put the airplane into a nice easy left turn to get me flying towards the Seal Beach VOR because, because at this point I'm going to forget limbo. I'm going straight back to the Seal Beach VOR and I'm going straight back to land at Hawthorne. The first thing I'm going to do after I get control of the airplane is that I am going to squawk 7700. I'm also going to tune in the Seal Beach VOR of 115.7 into NAV1. I'm going to identify the VOR in NAV1. Okay, it's just been identified. The next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to put in the Hawthorne localizer 109.1 .1 into VOR2. I'm going to identify the VOR2. Okay, the VOR2 is identified. The next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to find out what heading I need to fly to go to the Seal Beach VOR. I'm going to rotate the VOR1 heading bug until the needle is centered and the triangle is pointing up. And the heading is 089. So 089 will be my initial heading. So I'm going to put the airplane in a nice standard rate turn back to a heading of 089. And as I look down, you guys can see that there's nothing to see. Okay. Just because I'm partial panel does not mean I don't need to follow some procedures. Let's close the cowling flap so the engine does not overcool. I am in cruise flight after all. Okay, so the airplane is nicely turning. Uh, the VSI seems to be steady. Okay, I just turned to a heading 089. Let me recenter the VOR1 heading bug. Okay, now I got a heading of 085, and that will be my heading to the Seal Beach VOR. So I'm going to put the airplane into a heading of 085, and I'm going to fly that heading to the Seal Beach VOR. But just like before, there's nothing really else to it. I'm just going to keep the airplane heading in the direction of 090 as straight as I can. And I'll make further adjustments as the VOR needle moves to the left or the right. For the time purposes, now I'm going to move further into the flight. And uh, I'm not using any DME equipment, if you've noticed. So I am doing this old school. I'm paying attention to the VOR, seeing how fast the needle moves. That gives me an idea of how close I am to the VOR. Uh, and as you can see right now, that needle is starting to move pretty quick. So that means I'm very close to that VR. As a matter of fact, I will not change my heading anymore until the little triangle flips and the needle centers for a couple of seconds. Uh, once that happens, I'm going to do a standard rate turn to the left to intercept a radial of 340 out of the Seal Beach VOR. 
so I'll keep looking at the other instruments, keep looking at the VOR. Okay, the VOR just flipped, so I'm going to put the airplane in a nice standard rate turn to the left to a heading of 300 until I intercept the radial of 340 from the Seal Beach VOR. On my VOR1 heading bug, I will put a heading of 340. And at this point, I can actually start descending um, to 2,500 feet. So once I start descending, I can turn the carburetor heat on. Looking at the instruments, the instruments look good. The airplane is not losing too much altitude. There's nothing unusual about it. Okay, so once I reach a heading of 300, I'm going to try to level my wings as best as I can and maintain that heading uh, until I intercept the radial of 340 from the sealed beach VOR. This is nothing different than what I've done for my VOR navigational tutorial part 3. One more thing I'm going to do right now is that on a VOR2 heading bug I will put in a heading of 253 which is the localizer heading for the Hawthorne Airport. So, at the same time I'm keeping my eye on the VOR1 so I can intercept that 340 radial from the Seal Beach VOR. I'm also keeping my eye on the VOR2 which tells me when I've reached the point wells and when I need to turn on to final. Okay, so here comes the VOR1 needle. That means I'm pretty close to that 340 radial from the Seal Beach VOR. But uh, I think I might have turned a little too early. Uh, let me go back to a heading of 300 again. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure the mixture is full rich and that propeller knob is uh, full RPM. Okay, so here comes the VOR needle again. That is good. Uh, this time I'm going to let it come in closer before I turn. My altitude is 2,400 feet at this point, which is about 100 feet below where I should be. But, uh, in this case I will take it. That's actually pretty close. Okay, I let it drop to 2,300. Let me uh, get a little bit of that altitude back. Even in partial panel, you don't want to you don't want to play with more than 100 feet altitude and and 200 feet for the uh, simulator. So I'm flying pretty close on a 340 radial from the Seal Beach VOR, and I should intercept the localizer 25 into Hawthorne pretty soon. <laughs> 